Good morning, this is Shelby Law with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Saturday, July 18th, 2020. The fire potential impacts are shown here for the next couple of days. For today and tomorrow, we're really looking at some wind across southeast Idaho and into the northern tip of Utah there, and then some continued chance for mixed, and wet, dry, mixed wet and dry thunderstorms over central and eastern Utah, um, where we've been seeing them recently, and then also along the Sierra front for today. And then tomorrow, the thunderstorms sort of decrease in coverage uh, with just some continuing isolated thunderstorms over the Uintas and along the Sierra Front. On Monday, we'll see a better chance for some thunderstorms moving into the south central portion of the Great Basin. And that really kind of kicks off a, a change in the pattern going through next week where we'll see more and deeper moisture move up through the Great Basin. Here's the weather for the past 24 hours, looking at precipitation on the left and lightning activity on the right. Um, did have some of those storms over eastern Utah were accompanied by some light precip amounts and then also along the Sierra front. Great Basin fire activity is shown here and has been picking up over the last couple of days in, in um, new areas such as northern Nevada and even up into eastern Idaho. Some larger fire, a larger fire there in uh, northeast Nevada and um, southern Utah and then also one along the Utah and Idaho border. Precipitation percent of average for the past seven days, as uh, shown on the left, uh, very dry across Idaho and Nevada and northern Utah. Really just over the past week, we saw some light precipitation move into southern and eastern Utah. In the past 30 days, still showing the very dry signal over much of Nevada and central and southern Utah. ERCs are still pretty high for much of Utah and eastern Nevada. A couple of stations still reporting over the 97th percentile. The values have come down just a bit across the south with some of that moisture that's been in place over the past few days. Um, and and um, values are lower further north. Closer look at the areas where we've seen some larger fires. Uh, northeast Nevada, those ERCs are right at the historical records for the time of year, um, very high up in that area right now. And also down in southwest Utah, also sitting right at the historical records for the time of year, um, and pretty high. This morning's satellite imagery is showing a trough over the northern Rockies, kind of moving off to the east, uh, continuing continuing to see dry air over southern Nevada and some lingering moisture over eastern Utah where we'll see those thunderstorms pop up once again today. Uh, mild conditions across the north with the warmer temperatures across the south. So again pretty dry for the most part uh, except where we'll see a little bit of lingering moisture over eastern Utah and far western Nevada with those thunderstorms. No high risk has been issued today. And we'll see those stronger winds over the Snake River Plain and eastern uh, eastern Idaho and into just the northern t tip of Utah. And the image on the right shows where we're expecting to see those thunderstorms possibly pop up this afternoon, mainly the higher terrain of eastern Utah. We could see one or two just isolated thunderstorms there across the higher elevations of central Nevada. More of the same is expected on Monday um, with even some some drier conditions across much of the area. No high risk is issued for Sunday. So we'll continue to see those gusty winds over the uh, Snake River Plain and no far northern and northeast Utah. And we'll see the thunderstorms develop once again in m many of the same areas, the Uintas uh, across the higher elevations of central Nevada and the mountains of southern Utah. Again, these will all be on the isolated side. On Monday, we'll really begin to see things change as some moisture is drawn up into the Great Basin as this uh, little low sort of strengthens over the off the California coast. It will bring some moisture up into the basin and increase the chances for thunderstorms across uh, a larger area of central Nevada into southwest Utah. So we have issued high risk for dry thunderstorms there uh, for Monday. We can see on our wind image where, we, where we're expecting to see those stronger outflows from some of those thunderstorms in south central Nevada and southwest Utah. <coughs> and shown here on the, on the um, afternoon weather map where we're expecting to see those thunderstorms uh, from the weather service. Three-day precipitation totals really don't show much in the way of measurable precipitation, 
but by that Monday time frame, um, we will see that moisture, a better chance for moisture anyway, across southern Utah and into southeast Nevada. On Tuesday, the moisture continues to move further northward into the Great Basin. We will see thunderstorms uh, across parts of Utah, but also northern Nevada, where we haven't seen thunderstorms for quite some time and they will be on the drier side, so we have issued high risk for a large portion of northern Nevada for that lightning threat on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, the moisture continues to move northward, and we see a trough beginning to move into the Pacific Northwest, which will enhance the development of thunderstorms there over southwest Idaho, um, and on the heels of this drying trend that we, that's that been going on up there for a while, we have issued high risk uh, for those thunderstorms. We could also see increased wind across the southern Great Basin on Wednesday uh, ahead of that trough as well. So something to watch certainly for the first couple of days of next week as that uh, moisture moves northward through the Great Basin, bringing dry thunderstorms um, from south to north with some wind behind it. So definitely entering a high risk period uh, early next week. On Thursday, it looks like some deeper moisture moves up into Utah. Um, more of maybe a, a more traditional monsoon surge uh, with a better chance of measurable precipitation. We do actually see some of our PSAs turning from brown to yellow as that precipitation moves up um, into the area. So looking for a bit of a change there. Still dry, however, over Nevada and up into southwest Idaho. And on Friday, we'll continue to see possibly some wetter thunderstorms in eastern Utah and drier conditions moving into Nevada and western Idaho. So as those thunderstorms move up through the western half of the Great Basin early next week, they'll be followed by some drier air moving in by the weekend. The seven day pre precip totals are shown here, uh, definitely changing from the short term. So as we move into really midweek next week, we'll begin to see some uh, measurable precipitation, most notably over the higher elevations of Utah and the Arizona Strip, uh, western Wyoming, also the Idaho Mountains, the central Idaho Mountains. But it looks like the storms that will move through Nevada and up in, even to southwest Idaho will be on the drier side uh, for the first half of next week. The extended forecast is calling for near normal temperatures for must, much of the western U.S. And we're finally beginning to see some above normal chances for precipitation across the southwest and up into southern Utah and even over uh, the central Idaho mountains. So a bit of a switch. Looks like the monsoon um, will happen after all. This concludes today's fire potential briefing. Please check back tomorrow for the latest updates.